Hello everyone, Lawrence Fleming here again. We have interesting times that we're living in. We've been talking about a bunch of them. But don't jump to conclusions when you see certain things happen. We are merely setting the stage. Where if you watch a chess match, in the beginning it seems kind of boring. You're moving your pawns around. You're taking area. You're not really going to battle against the king and queen yet. But you have to dominate the board so that they don't have any room to run. Okay, so what's happening now, especially when we look at the Russian-Ukrainian war, they're not going there so that they can be on the doorstep of Israel. Their intent is not necessarily to go into Israel right now. They're preoccupied. Putin is ex-KGB during the time of USSR. And Ukraine was part of the USSR. You know, the Beatles song, back in the USSR. Your Ukraine girls really knock me out. They leave the West behind. Okay, so right there you can see what he's doing. He's just trying to put the countries back together. It's a land grab. It's an area that he wants uh, was in charge of security wise he knows security because that was his job and of course like every dictator in the world the elections that keep electing him <laughs> who's going to oppose him they'll wind up in the Siberian tundra if they oppose him too much we keep hearing about Russia eliminating their opposition okay so this is not setting up the Ezekiel 38 war, the Gog-Magog war, although Magog is where Russia is, but Russia covers so much territory. It's basically the countries to the north. And we know that the uh, historian Josephus said that the Scythians or living where Magog is. And they've always been kind of a warring tribe. Nobody around them wanted them near them. The Great Wall of China was built to stop them from attacking China. So that's the group that's going to come down. And it will include all the countries that Russia dominates. It may not be the USSR, but it will be Russia leading the group. Having Ukraine puts them back in the group. It also gives them access to the Mediterranean, which is the stepping stone to getting in there and wanting the natural gas that Israel just discovered. They're preoccupied with land grabbing at the moment, but when they find out that Israel is going to start selling natural gas and undermining Russia's power base over there, that's when the hook's going to be put in his mouth. Now, there's a couple of verses I want to look at today. One of them is Psalm 83. And this is written like 3,000 years ago. No one back then would have known any of this. And we've got to do the same thing here that we're going to do when we get to Ezekiel 38. The names are the names that applied then. The countries don't exist anymore with those names, most of them. But it's the area that we want to talk about. We know Magog is to the far north. We, are, we know the other countries in Ezekiel of uh, Put and all these other ones. Uh, Libya, we know where that's at. The only one that we can really say for certain we know the area would be Persia because that was Iran's name until they changed it few years ago. So Iran is Persia and they're going to be part of it. Russia just asked them for help in fighting in Ukraine. They're becoming friends. Russia meets with Turkey all the, all the time. So we know that they're going to be friends and come together against Israel. All the countries that are around Israel basically hate 
Israel. Now, they didn't always hate Israel. Turkey used to be friends. In fact, the Israelis used to go up there and vacation. But it's interesting how in these later days that countries that were friends have all turned. Iraq turned. So all these people are lining up for the future, but it's not ready yet. We're close. And it could happen in just a few months. It's going to happen this year, but when, we don't know. But all the pieces are falling into place. The chessboard is lining. I don't know if you know much about chess, but sometimes when I used to, to play, uh, I would get books and it says, uh, okay, using this chessboard, get checkmate in four moves or something like that. And we'd have to sit and do that. Okay, I see uh, someone's coming home. Okay. This road out here can get very noisy. And I'm out here a little bit later than I normally am. So anyhow, Psalm 83, verse 1. Do not keep silent, O God. Do not hold your peace. And do not be still, O God. For behold, your enemies make a tumult. And those who hate you have lifted up their head and they have taken crafty counsel against your people. Who would be the crafty counsel? Satan. And consulted together against your sheltered ones. They have said, come and let us cut them off from being a nation, that the name of Israel may be remembered no more. This has been going on for a long time. And a lot of these countries that it talks about, I'm just gonna mention a few of them here, they form a confederacy against you, the tents of Edom and the Ishmaelites and Moab and the Hagrites, Gabon, Ammon, Amalek, Philistia, and the inhabitants of Tyre. Assyria has also joined with them. They have helped from the children of Lot. Lot and Abraham, that's 4,000 years ago, so and this was written 3,000 years ago. So they're, they're referencing all the names and places that are familiar with them. But historically, we know where they're at. So when we switch over to Ezekiel 38, starting in verse 1, Now the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, set your face against Gog of the land of Magog. Gog is a title, sort of like Pharaoh or president or whatever. The prince of Rosh, Meshach, and Tubal. We know where those are. And prophesy against them and say, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I am against you, O Gog, the prince of Rosh, Meshach, and Tubal. I will turn you around and put hooks into your jaws and lead you out with all your armies and horses and horsemen, all splendidly clothed, a great company of bucklers and shields, all of them handling swords. Persia, Ethiopia, and Libya are with them, all of them with shield and helmet, Gomor and all of the its troops, the house of Tagarma to the, from the far north and all of its troops. Many people are with you. Prepare, prepare yourself and be ready, you and all your companies that are gathering about you, and be a guard for them. After many days you will be visited, and the later years you will come into the land of those brought back from the sword and gathered from many people in, on the mountains of Israel, which had long been desolate were called dry bones, remember? They were brought out of the nations and now all of them dwell safely. You will ascend coming like a storm, covering the land like a cloud, you and all your troops and many peoples with you. We know who all these people are. It's, it's a combination of a land grab by Russia, because they're not, they're not gonna be opposing Israel for the religious beliefs. But all the Arab nations do oppose them. Satan's been at them for years, creating hatred, fermenting this hatred. And it's been there. And it's a, it's a rivalry hatred, similar to Cain and Abel. One's got something, and the other doesn't have it, and he gets mad. Okay, well, we're going to see the same thing. But the Ukrainian war is, right now, it's just 
setting the stage. It's a very large country, so it's a big land grab, but it is not the Magog War yet. But it puts them into the, just to the north of the Black Sea, and it gives them an access port to the Mediterranean, which they currently don't have. So that's something that they want. They've got a trading port that they can go in and out of, and they can get their military vessels in and out. Israel is on the coast, so that gives them access to, to them as well. Okay, so the only country really that's not mentioned is Egypt. It's interesting that they're not there. They once opposed them, but they paid the price. And they basically stayed out of a lot of the stuff recently. They were involved in the other wars, but now they're just kind of backed away and they're not getting involved. They learned their lesson that once again they were fighting Israel, which really means they're fighting God. So we know that what's coming now is just moving chess pieces on the board. They're not there yet. Really what's going to happen is once they get there, they can come down and visit and move their troops into Turkey if they want. Syria they're already in, and Syria is on the border. Russians already said that the Golan Heights don't belong to Israel, belong to Syria. So if there's going to be any place coming in, and that's coming through the mountains. The Golan Heights overlooked the valleys below, so they had a really good place to launch their missiles. And they weren't very smart missiles back then. So if they could get a close view of what they were shooting at, they could see where they were landing and adjust them. But now they've got long-range missile capability. They can launch straight from Syria without even having the Golan Heights. But it's going to give Russia a chance to come in there and be on the side of Syria and help them claim their land. Russia's just claimed Ukraine. Well, Syria's going to claim the Golan Heights. You can't do that. Every time Israel gives up land, it costs them. They should never have given up the Gaza Strip. If they thought it would bring peace, it didn't. None of the area, the West Bank, none of it. Jerusalem, they never should have given up full control of Jerusalem. But it put the timing in control of God. When they gave it up, they couldn't go up there and build their temple because the time wasn't right, but it will be right. The Antichrist is probably going to be the one to broker the peace after we see the Magog War. They're going to be stopped. They're not going to be wiped out on the face of the earth, but they will be stopped. And that will make everybody sit back for a little bit. But then the Antichrist is going to come on the scene and act like Christ. And he's going to get the ball rolling again, get the hatred brewing again. They're going to first attack the Christians, of course. That's why there will be Christian martyrs during the 70th day. Satan would love to wipe out Israel. And so he's going to get in there and get the world angry with them again. I talked about it in my last video. There will be a battle on earth, a simple one. Satan will be kicked out of heaven. It's too bad that he's been there all this time anyway for us down here, but he'll be kicked out of heaven. He'll bring his angels down here. And now all of his people are down here ready to fight. Satan needs as many people down here as possible. The demons, he needs them. He's not omnipresent. So there is there his eyes and ears so he knows what's going on. His time is coming, but we don't belong to that time. Once we start the 70th day, the focus switches from Christians and for the church age, as they call it, switches back to Israel. The 69 days involved Israel. And the 70th day involves them as well. Jesus says, I will not come back until you acknowledge me as Lord. So that's what's coming up. The 144,000 will help. Our two witnesses 
with their powers will fight the Antichrist. It's going to be interesting to see, but like we watch football games on TV, we don't have to get down there on the line and watch. We're safe. We don't have to get banged around. I remember my high school days. <laughs> I was small back then, and those guys were big. And I was highly motivated to run fast, and that seemed to work. Anyhow, don't be worried about what's going on now. The things that are going on in this country, frankly, are not tied to anything other than moving chess pieces. The price of gas is high because of the fear of getting cut off from over there. We've got enough gas here. We don't even need them, but we're not going to use it. The price of gas is to drive the price of commodities up for everybody. What do you think the, the ships were sitting out at sea for? They didn't want goods coming in. With the price of oil high, we're spending all of our money, all of our time, just to get food on the table. That's what they want. Then they can come in and, and save us. The most scariest thing in the world, I'm from the government and I'm here to help. Well, that's what they're going to use because they don't teach history well enough anymore. All right, what we've got coming is going to be tough. If you've got room in your garage or in your pantry, buy up extra food. The rich guys, whether it's Warren Buffett or Elon Musk, basically say during times of inflation, cash is not what you want. Buy goods, buy houses, buy things that are tangible, because those will still be there during the inflation and after it. Inflation, like anything, goes up and down. If it goes all the way to the bottom, like the Great Depression or any of our, any of our other times, you have to dig your way out, and it can take a while. But tangible goods will always be there. If you have a house, you know, I'm not saying now would be the best time to go out and buy it, but watch the markets. We're in a housing bubble in many areas. I spent some time in Utah earlier this year. Their housing prices, including their rentals, were double what they were a couple years before. Because people are leaving California and they want a new place to live that's better. I think it's interesting that they leave a place that they don't like and then they get to a new place that's perfect and then they try to change it to be back like the place they lived. I think, uh, was it Arizona or New Mexico had a sign up? If you're from California, turn around, we don't want you. I know when we first moved here, we were surprised at how low the housing prices were here in Georgia. I mean, we didn't think we could qualify for a house because I just left my job. I wasn't very long on my new one here. This is over 30 years ago. And we started looking at housing and the pricing was so low, I could have bought four houses for the price of a house in California. They've always been expensive. They're crazy now, but they've always been expensive. But now that we've got Hollywood basically has been driven out of California and they're filming here now. In the main United States, we're the number one film country, film uh, industry in the nation. We compete with Canada as to who makes the most film in the world, TV and film. Canada's pretty good. They had a pretty uh, big industry up there established before uh, all this moved to Georgia. And they set up a, an area in New Orleans and they had an area in, in the Carolinas, but they lost it for, for various political reasons. Louisiana, the tax break, the government goes, we're not gonna give any more tax breaks, we want all your money and they got rid of it. The companies packed up and moved to Georgia. Well, once you establish yourself in a place, it's hard to get people to go back. All right, enough of this. I've got to work on a TV series tomorrow, playing a fireman. So I have to be clean shaven. Firemen wear, wear their oxygen masks and they have to fit tight. 
don't want smoke in there. I had to go through firefighting school when I was in the Navy, and I had a mask that leaked. And it was, I'm sitting there holding it, trying to keep the smoke from getting in once I figured out where it was leaking at. I came out coughing. They put us in a little room in a smoke pot in there, and we had to sit in there. They did the same thing in another room where they dropped gas canisters. Those burned. Things we have to do to defend this country. Be sure to thank the firemen. They're our real heroes, soldiers when you see them. I'm a Vietnam vet. We didn't get thanked when we came home. So it's really great to see the soldiers, like when you go to the airport, there's groups greeting them coming off the planes. That's the way it should be. And we fought for the freedom of this country. It's sad to see it going away, but we know why it's going away. We're in the end times. Be prepared. Don't quit doing any of the other, any of the other things that you were doing before. If you're going out and handing out tracts, if you're talking to people about the Lord, don't stop doing that. Do that with every breath you've got until we're in the air. You could even yell down if you want. Keep doing that. Keep saving souls or planting seeds. It's not our job to bring people in and make them Christians. It's simply our job to present them with the right information so they can make a choice. And then it's between them and God as to whether they accept. There are going to be many Christians converted during the time of the tribulation. They're going to see what's going on. They're going to finally get their head out of the sand and, and away from their phone long enough to realize, oops, I should have been on the bus that left an hour ago. Okay. Until we meet in the skies, which always has been imminent, but I think it's very, very soon. The Jewish calendar starts April 1st, the evening of. From then on, it's whatever timing God wants to work. We're not going to know the time. And it's not the, uh, you won't know the day or the hour, that's the second coming. But nothing mentions the rapture as far as when. We just know we're going to get out of here before it gets bad. But the longer we stay, the more souls we save. So don't be in a too big of a hurry to leave. As long as you're a Christian, you won't miss the bus. Okay. It's cloudy today. Maybe today. Can't wait to be with Jesus. Bye for now. I have a topic for the next video. We're going to look at all the things that Israel has to do to make peace the countries that they have to make peace with in order to be able to build the temple. The temple is the only thing really that's missing from the end times. Will they have the ark? We're going to talk about some of that on the next video. Hopefully it will warm up more here. It's cool, but there's no wind. You can't tell who's cooking what because there's no wind but we know what's cooking in the Middle East. And I'm probably gonna post, while we're on that, I'm probably gonna post one of my camping videos just to give you an idea of what I'm working on. I'd like to be teaching from a campsite. I might even be able to put a, a whiteboard up so we could talk, but it'd be from a campsite. It'll be base camping, if you know the difference. I can backpack camp and I can also base camp. I have a bigger tent. I'd be able to have things with me that I can use as teaching aids. And I may even show you how to cook eggs and pancakes on the griddle in the morning. I already made chili in the first video, which I think I'm going to post in the next couple of days. Watch for it. We're almost, oh, today is the Ides of March. That too, Brute? Be careful. It doesn't apply to us, but it applies to the world. We're going to be celebrating St. Patrick's Day in a couple of days. If you drink, drink responsibly.
Bye for now. We'll see you in the next video. God bless.